Hello, my good people. Good to see you once again. Today we are talking what are these four businesses that you are very careful before you even start them. Because I've been meeting a lot of people who approach me and tell me, hey, you know what, Joseph? I started this business and guess what is happening? I cannot even see the value for my money. I'm frustrated. The business is now on the down drain. I do not even know what to do. And guess what I've done? Out of those guys who have approached me, bearing on the same businesses that I'm about to discuss with you, I've realized there is one thing that they share in common that actually get them into problems that they do not even know how they can get themselves out of them guess what stick around watch these four businesses what are they so you don't get yourself into them or maybe if you're already into them then what can you do so that at least you get yourself to the next level but guess what before we do that take one second just a single second guess what it is free and fast up with watching on your right on your right there is a button written subscribe it is in black just hit it Guess what? And then up we go below on your left, there is a button written just like this. Just hit that like. That is called a like. And guess what? It's very free. And it will be notified when you when I upload a new video because I know you're asking yourself what's the importance of that. I can just ignore and watch it. Don't do so. Just do exactly what I've told you. All right. On today's business. All right. So what are these four businesses that get people into problem? Business number one, it's quite popular. You have ever heard of it? It's called a restaurant. And when I say restaurant or Kenyan context, I mean a place where people come in, they eat, and then they leave. We also call it a hotel. We, actually, we don't even have the differences or something of sort. So this is a place where you actually prepare food for people. They come and eat. They give you money. Then they disappear. A lot of people approach me and tell me, "What? Well, hey, Joseph, I run a very good and successful, uh, successful business as far as the restaurant is concerned or a hotel is concerned." You see, I, I, I do a lot of transactions during the day, but when it comes to the evening when i'm doing my you know my you know we do the difference the operational cost if it's a fee how much you've made and so that you can be able to tell how much have you made in a profit or in terms of a profit in that particular day when you pay your workers if you have them when you pay all your bills when you pay back whatever you get all those foods and what have you and then you realize you are left with nothing and whatever you've been left with it doesn't even make sense it's not even the what the job that you've done the entire day like somebody brought you some kuni or brought you some maca brought you some unga brought you some things and whatever so when you do all those calculations and then you pay your workers we pay your electricity what have you we call all those things operational costs and then when you subtract that man that amount of money that you have the sales eh, minus the operational cost you're supposed to be left with a what a profit but then you realize like oh my I don't even have that much that I can even say that I'm just make, making profit, all right? So that is the basis of where people go wrong. This is what you're supposed to do. A business like a restaurant, you're supposed to be very, very careful, all right? It's a business that you're supposed to have a book and something. You have to write down all the amount of money that you've used in buying certain thing and how much that does that certain thing make out of it all right so because you cannot just assume like i just go ahead and buy i don't know a full bale of unga chapati and mix chapatis and make some beans and whatever and i sell to people or make fast food buy some cuckoos from farmers and sell to people and then i just you, you don't do that with business you have to be very fine and good at numbers by the way sometimes i used to have a friend of mine who was operating that kind of a business and then sometimes why wow, he was so free to the workers then workers could just you know you know dishing into the you know at uh, the counter get some food get some tea they would drink tea any moment they won't eat any moment they were they were just like free i'm not saying that you're supposed to limit people but in the process you are bulging what we call the operational cost so you're supposed to be very careful do all your maths correctly so that you'll be able to get exact information and how much you can actually prospect how much will I make at the end of the day that is very tricky it's a very tricky business that you're supposed to be very careful before even you get yourself into it I would advise you interact with people who are operating the same business and get more information on how they're able to do their mathematics so they don't get confused along the way all right stick around guess what the next one is quite a good one all right and which is it is a general shop this is quite most popular business that you find people in most cases when people start thinking of starting a business it's like kind of the very first business that click on your head ah but they want to start a business and then they're like ah i can just start a general general shop all right when i say a general shop in a con kenyan context i mean a shop that where you sell the it's like a convenience store in, in in us and what have you so it's like where you're selling all these home commodities like the maize flour when you're selling like uh, you know sort of these common things you get my point like bar soap and whatever sugar salt and what have you so you find this is a quite a tricky business because most of the people don't even know how to calculate the profit because like you can't even have a track of how many bars of did you sell how many kilos of sugar maybe for sugars you can tell uh, you don't even know how much you sell for sweets or how or candies or whatever you call them so it's, it's kind of tricky business you can't even tell okay fine i made a sales of like five thousand today or ten thousand or even hundred thousand and how much did i need all right so it's quite tricky so at this particular point when it comes to this business i would advise you 
you know, do this. All right, just decide this from today, from this shop, yeah, depending on the size, yeah, I'll be taking like 800 in a day. At every evening, I'll be taking 800, put it in my pocket, and get to see whether the business will sustain itself. You take 800, you put it somewhere, assume that's the money that you pay yourself, and then you realize whenever that day that usually take stock or you restock the shop, whether you have the uh, enough amount to actually go ahead and restock the shop. If you realize you can be able to restock the shop without going back to the pocket that you did put your 800, then that means the 800 you're taking is still within the healthy range. All right, so you can just then add another 200 on top of it, so you'll be taking a thousand bob, and then you still wait up the day that you're supposed to restock and such and see whether you're able to do exactly that. If you're able to do then then realize that you're making more than that and you're still within the head. So keep on adding the amount until you know to reach to a certain point whereby you realize now you've subjected the, the, the shop or the business to a stress, whereby you're now required to go back to the pocket and get something small, you know, to add up on now that, that now that way you can be able to tell, ah, okay, wow. So my profit ranges from one thousand two hundred, one thousand three hundred francs. You get the thing, yeah? So you can uh, balance it a, a, around that particular point, and that's the only way you can be able to tell. Or should I say that is one of the only ways that you can be able to tell how much you make as a profit or in that specific business in a general shop. Guess what coming next? Mm -hmm. You guessed it, right? Stick around and get to understand it. All right, so that business that usually find people in a very stressful moment, it's fruit business or we call them the groceries and what have you. It's a nice, fast and easier business to start. You can actually start it from outside somewhere, but this is the mistake that people make, yeah? Because you want to make your shop look elegant, nice, good, you know what you're doing. So you kind of stock a lot of those fruits uh, to your place, and in the process, you kind of lose a lot of things. Because, you know, those are perishables. And the perishables, you know, they happen to go bad, you know, easily. Provide If you do not have the cooling system, and that's why if you go to, you know, supermarkets, the hypermarkets, and all those convenience stores, you usually find, you know, this fruit, they usually have a refrigeration. Because they know they are perishables, then they can go but easily so if you do not have that kind of a system with you or for you then i would advise make sure that you stock your stock based on the demand all right you can just tell well i think lemons or, or orange oranges are moving faster than you know bananas or what have you so you kind of monitor and say okay fine i'll be stocking this shop on a ratio of three two one one four whatever the ratio right depending on how those products move don't just you know Sell things according to the way you love them. You know, I just love when my groceries just have a lot of bananas and I just love my groceries when they have a lot or it has a lot of, you get the thing. So you should be guided by how much or the demand based on that specific product. So focus towards, focus, you know, focus towards talking that specific item that you know it is faster moving rather than you putting your money on areas that you find things are not moving. And by the way, if you make it, just bring you a little bit back and tell you something. You find that, Say you are running a shop and then you feel like, okay, fine, I just feel like I can add some plastics or mali mali thing outside, yeah? And then you you realize that, uh, you know, as, you know those plastics have been there like for the last six months. Guess what? That's a dead capital. It's not even working. We call it an inventory, you know, inventory that is not even generating any income. So you're supposed to be very careful. Stock that what is moving. Let me tell you one thing. Cash is king at all the times. And you're supposed to have things that flows off the shelf so that you can be able to make, uh, to make money. Don't think this is work. Just keep on asking people. Keep on asking. What do you think if I put up some? What do you think if I can put? What do you think? That's, that's the thing. Because those are the people who buy. Just ask them at all the occasions. But sometimes be very careful. You can talk a lot and maybe sell some business ideas out there. And then you realize somebody just come to the next to your shop and then puts up the same business. So it's all about having the wisdom. All right? So the last but not, but not the least, it's about beauty. And when I say beauty, I say like salon. I say about, about the, the beauty shop. I talk about, uh, you know, the barber shop and what have you. These are businesses that you're supposed to. I always advise people, have the skills for that specific business. Can you imagine operating a barber shop or maybe let's say a salon or a beauty shop or whatever. And then you don't have the skills. And then the person who have employed, they have the chances of controlling you. You get the thing? Because you don't have the skills. Then they already know you don't have the skills and you don't know how to do exactly that. So to them, they're already an asset. All right, they kind of dictate to you. You're always, you know, in the morning you're calling them, hey, you know what, guy, you know, it's already time for work. Where are you? Where are you? And they keep on telling you, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. You get the thing? Because you don't have the skills. So you're supposed to, I would advise people like, okay, fine, even if you have to put up the business and don't have the skills, well, maybe look for somebody who you know you can trust. But trust and business don't go hand in hand, all right? I prefer due diligence than trust. So uh, what I would say is this, if you want to start those kind of a businesses that involve skills and services, 
kind of have those services because it is usually good. You'd rather spend some, let's say, a, a month or two somewhere where you know they are operating that kind of a business and you sort of learn or something also. You'd rather even have the basics of the skills so that at least you can be able to go ahead and start that business. I have seen a lot of ladies who are suffering. They start up a very nice salon. They set up like, you know, a 200,000 worth of a salon or 300. And then after that, those people who have, they have employed, because they don't have the skill, they can manipulate, manu manipulate them. Manipulate, you didn't manipulate, manipulate them, yeah. So it is not good to make sure, or rather, it's not even healthy to make sure that or to put up a business where you do not have those skills. It's good to have those skills accompanied to you or with you, so that at least, even if this goes south, then you can be able to do so. But I can give you a trick on this. What you can do, maybe when you're setting up this kind of a business, you're supposed to have an agreement, all right. Say this, you know what, eh? I'll be paying you a salary of this, this a particular amount of money, but you have to show up at this time and this and this and this, an agreement. A written document and a written agreement so whenever they violate that you can actually go ahead and sue them and you can use the legal ways to actually uh you know avoid this person to intimidate you or something also and then after that when the business now lays or foundation or have them the foundation of the business now you can be able to shift back to you know what we call the incentives like commissions and what have you and things like that all right so because i know people usually take advantage and people most of the people are out there to just make money from your business and at the end of the day they don't even care about you. That's the reality. It, I know it may be, you know, hard to swallow, but that's a fact, all right? So anyway, my name is Joseph. If you've never seen this face before, I talk about investment, I talk about money, I talk about anything related to your cash. So if that's a copy of your coffee, then stick around. And by the way, why shouldn't it be? Everybody, it's, it's everybody's favorite thing. Money, everybody loves money. I do, and I believe you do. And by the way, it is not bad, all right? So stick around, make sure you subscribe. And how do you do that? It's very free, just down below on the left, on the left, there is a button, just click it. On the right, there is a also, uh, you know, that button, the black one, click it and subscribe. That's how you become a member. And don't forget, by the way, I have booklets of business plans, business ideas, shares, treasury bees, treasury bonds, money market fund, water. You can get those copies or that copy that you like and then from there you can find a way on how you can be able to invest and grow yourself to the next level. Alright, so I'll leave my number in the description of this box. I'll still pin it down on the comment section. And by the way, I'm still waiting you on the comment section. Put down your idea there and tell me what you're thinking because I believe you have something that you can, you can, you can share with us and say as well. Alright, so see you there. For now, it's a goodbye. Stick around.